Hi, I'm Louise and this is the Pilates for Busy People weekly show. Welcome to the second part of the running series. This week I talked to Michelle Mortimer from Miles with Michelle about running with dogs. Michelle is a canicross instructor. Have you ever heard of canicross? It's the sport of running cross country with dogs attached to you and it is really, really good fun and not as scary as it looks. So if you have a dog and run, why not give it a go? Before we get into the main part of the show though, if you are a runner, I wanted to let you know about my Pilates for Runners Facebook group. It's great if you want to improve your technique, reduce your risk of injuries. In the group, we have a series of videos to help you strengthen your core, your legs, and reduce your risk of injuries. A must, especially when starting out. It's an area as runners we often forget to train. I'll put the link below. So let's get on with the main part of the show. Hi, and welcome to this week's Pilates for Busy People weekly show. This week I've got Michelle from my, Michelle Mortimer, sorry, from Miles with Michelle. So Michelle, tell us about yourself. Hello. Well, I'll introduce myself first of all. Thanks for having me on, Louise. Much it's appreciated. Pleasure. So I'm a running coach. I've been coaching for about probably about 10 years informally now. Um, I took my qualifications about four or five years ago um, and I decided to set up, I used to do it all voluntarily, decided to set up my own coaching business um, yep. after I had a daughter because I didn't want to go back to full-time work. Um, <laughs> and we've always had a dog. We've always, um, our older dog, Bella, she's 12 now. She's always run with us. Um, and about 18 months ago, we adopted um, another rescue dog called Poppy. Um, and she's a whole different ball game. <laughs> um, and I need to keep her on a lead. She's some kind of sight hound. So I gradually got into canny cross um, and eventually um, was persuaded by somebody that I met on Twitter to train up as a leader. So I now um, run canny cross classes locally. Um, I canny cross regularly with both my dogs. Um, and I now teach other people to do it, especially beginners. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. <laughs> that's fantastic. So your most of your co coaching now is with um, people with dogs running with dogs, is it? Or do you do yes, it I do a lot of online coaching with general runners. I, I create training plans for people who get in touch with me online. Brilliant. But most of my day to day face to face work is with people who run with the dogs, teaching them how to do it safely. So, so I have only heard about Canny Cross fairly recently, having got back into running after an injury and having a, a year old pup now, or a dog, um, and who is very energetic and it's a great way to exercise <laughs> and keep her yeah. on control. I too have to keep her on a lead as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit more about Canny Cross. What, how did it, what, what's it, what's it about, I suppose? Well, Canny Cross, essentially, it's just running with your dog, basically. Uh -huh. There are lots of different ways to do it. Um, it's getting a lot more popular lately. Um, I think with many companies, especially like DogFit, who I'm involved with, um, helping to train beginners, um, yeah. it's always been quite a, considered quite a sport. So there's a lot of people who race with the dogs at Canny Cross events. Um, but recently, there are a lot more beginners getting into it just as a way of, I mean, Canny Cross is great for saving time. Yep. I used to feel guilty going out, coaching running groups, patting the dogs on the head and saying, I'll see you in a few hours, dogs. And I thought, why can't I go out and actually take my dogs to work with me? It's brilliant now I can. Um, so it's a great time saver. You can exercise yourself and your dog at the same time. And it is fantastic for dogs that are underconfident, um, yep. dogs that are especially reactive, dogs that are very highly prey driven. Uh, my dog is probably all of those being a rescue and a sight hound. So she she thinks it's fantastic and doing canny cross it really helps because the dog is listening to you telling because the dog's in front of you you're telling it commands it has yeah. to really listen to you so it can really help build that bond between the two of you as well it's 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 a really good activity for both dog and human and how long does it take to so i have a a, a yeah a gun dog yeah. <laughs> it's very prey driven i like that word because that's what yeah. she is um, so how long would it take me to train her to become a really because at the moment I run with her on and I handheld a lead a long lead yeah. which isn't brilliant for my running style yeah but I'm worried about having her around my waist for when she goes off when she sees something so how long would it take to train her do you think I know that you can't say that run in a harness attached to your waist you mean yeah. 
yeah um, well normally I, I'll do courses with people complete beginners never run with dogs before and the dogs have kind of got the hang of it after the first session right. so it just takes a little bit of um, it's a bit different because normally our instinct is to say to the dog don't pull don't pull and we're yeah. constantly training it not to pull whereas in canny cross because they're attached to us at the front we want them to pull so once the dog's got the hang of it that it's in this harness and you actually want it to run out in front and pull you yeah. a little bit yeah it's fine so from that respect it doesn't take long to get the dog used to it in terms of building up their running um, normally we'd advise you know six to eight weeks of just you know a couch to 5k essentially oh brilliant yeah okay. and the dog um up to maybe 30 minutes running um, and whatever I, you're comfortable with and are there special harnesses that for the dog to wear because i've got uh, my dog in a harness but i know it's not a proper canny cross one or whatever yes there are running harnesses i, I will I'll, i've got the kit here what i'll do i'll show you the three bits of kit that we use so so the dog harness it's not brilliant my dog's asleep on the bed in there she's um, she's tired after a run this morning so i can't show you a yeah. model with it um, but this harness essentially it's that way up so it looks really simple it's really light its head goes through the front yeah it's nice and padded it's nice and comfortable this one's waterproof as well along the bottom so it's not getting too muddy the important thing when you're looking for a running harness is to make sure this goes over its back its neck through here to make sure that its shoulders its shoulders will be here its shoulders can't be restricted there's a lot of walking harnesses that i see and i see people starting to run in them yeah and um, kind of have a bar across the front of the dog's shoulders um yeah and it restricts the dog's movement because the dog's movement comes from its neck and its shoulders right so it's really important when you're looking for a harness um to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing um i mean i offer a lot of tater sessions i've got a garage full of kit where i let clients just try on loads of harnesses see what works best for the dog um but really just you know if you consult a specialist website such as dog fit yep. they'll be able to to advise on the best kind of harness and but you know they're not bank breaking i think this one's about 40 pounds so yeah as well no, it's quite good. you think how much you'll you'll use it um and then you'll you'll have that harness attached to a bungee lead yeah so we use a bungee lead to absorb the shock really when the dog's pulling yeah because um, that's a bit you can see how much resistance is in that can't yeah, you yeah, yeah. You can yeah. tell I've not, I've not been doing any upper body lately, look. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this is our, our human element, oh, so our waist right. belt okay. there. So that sits on your bottom and your legs go through straps and then we have a little waist belt um, that kind of fastens around your waist there. Yeah. And you were asking yeah. earlier, Louise, about you're a bit scared of being pulled over by your yeah. dog. Yeah. If you think about it, if you're holding a dog on its lead, you don't have that much strength really in your shoulders and your right. neck, do you? Um, whereas in your hips, you're really quite strong and you, you know, your central gravity's lowered anyway. Yeah. You can lean back and the dog shouldn't pull you. I've never known anybody be pulled over, honestly. That's a first. Um, and I've helped teach some big dogs. Um, we had a, um, a German pointer who weighed 40, I think he was 45 kilos at my last course. Um, and, you know, his owner was still upright. She did great. So... So, so, and that's really reassuring, actually. And yeah. I, I do need to try this definitely. Um, so, um, what, what, so I th I'm assuming that Pilates would actually be really, really good for Canny Cross because yes. it's core, it's, yeah. it's all core work, core and back. So it will yeah. give you that strength. The yeah. other thing I was um, uh, thinking um, was, so you sort of said if they pull too much, you've got to lean back a bit. So running style, so. The thing that restricts me holding the lead is my running style, which I obviously you know want to get better so that I can run faster. Um, once the dog's trained, is that usually quite you, you're quite free in your your running your own running technique, or is it? Yes, yeah. Unless you're going up and down hills like I constantly am, going downhill with a dog wanting to pull can be quite challenging. Um, yeah. But on the flat, like for example, we've got the canal near us, and today the dog was just off, and it's brilliant. You just feel free, and because they're yeah. giving you a bit of a helping hand, you can move your arms freely, which is the brilliant bit about being attached at the waist. Um, you're totally hands free. Um, and apart from having to lean back when you give that command just to, to oh, right. stop, so, yeah. Um, then yeah, your running posture is improved, if anything, I think, with oh, a dog, really? because they're encouraging you to lean forward 
And your yeah. speed is obviously in, in uh, Yes, <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, you definitely get a helping hand with the dog attached. <laughs> That's good. And do you think it's a really good way for people to start running? If, if, so there's a lot more people doing couch to 5K and things like that, yeah. which is absolutely fantastic. Do you think running in the, with your dog is, is more motivational? I can hear my dog in the background. I think, I think it's brilliant. I know, I know a lot of people who don't want to start running because they're on their own. Um, and having, I always say, you know, get a friend yeah. to motivate you. Um, but a dog, you know, a dog is brilliant to be able to take a dog out running. I never, ever run alone. I hate running alone now because I've, I've always got my dogs for company. Um, and it's just brilliant. It makes you feel safer as well. And yeah. I know we should, you know, we shouldn't feel like that as ladies, should we, that we're ever unsafe. But it does give you a bit of reassurance having your dog with you. No, I think it's fantastic. And as you said earlier, it kills two birds with one stone. So you don't have to go out for an extra yeah. walk yeah so as a running coach uh what sort of things other things do you get people to do if they're taking it seriously or want to race canny cross and stuff like that what other cross training bits do you advise people to do um aside from canny cross you mean? yeah yeah um cross training wise just strength work really anything um anything you know swimming cycling um gym work i advise a lot of people to take things up like yoga pilates just to yeah. improve flexibility and core strength um really it's about it's just about being strong all over your body isn't it yeah i, I just focused I, on running yeah and, and i just think people start running and then they get all these injuries and then they yeah. think oh why am i getting these and there's there's a lot more to running as with most sports actually that you just yeah often yeah. it's interesting you say that about injury often the reason people get injured when they start is they try and do too much too soon yeah um and you do when you start getting those endorphins if you've never run before you start experiencing that adrenaline buzz yeah you can't you kind of want it more and you get a bit addicted to it and it's so easy to do too much yeah um, so it's just important when you're starting out just to you know limit it every other day max yeah. especially if the dog's just starting as well because dogs will just carry on <laughs> um, they won't really tell you they don't do they they don't tell you that you're no, tired no. No, no. they'll just Never go don't. and then they'll collapse when they get home um so yeah, you've got so, a lot of responsibility there as well so yeah. you just take it you, and you don't have to start canny cross um running either i walk my dogs in my canny cross kit as well it's just brilliant for hands-free walking so you don't have to just start out and you know start running straight away try yeah. a bit of walking first while you're training the commands yeah so the, the couch to uh, 5k is is a really good thing to do um, it is yes yeah, we do dog fit does an online version if you don't have a trainer near you um, right. so there is there is an online version that you can do that'll, that'll take you through the whole six weeks as well brilliant oh i didn't know that's so that's brilliant yeah. excellent yeah. good well that's fantastic and i think and and i assuming that um it's the fitness of your dog it doesn't actually much matter what age they are potentially as to when to, you can start yeah that's something there is a lower age limit so we wouldn't yes. advise starting canny cross with a dog who's younger than one year old no exactly for larger yes. breeds it can often be a little bit older before they're fully mature so just wait until the one wait until the bones are fully developed yeah and then <laughs> and then um just start them off gently yeah um, and just watch them closely and listen to them um, yeah no yeah. no yeah mine mine that's got duracell batteries so she never stops <laughs> well, there's, there's certainly no upper age limit i've um, I've got a seven-year-old dog um, who runs with me regularly um, with a client and he's only just started a few months ago and he's really happy he yeah, loves it brilliant um, and my, my other dog's 12 and she's still going strong she's brilliant oh, that's, yeah. fab. that's brilliant I think we've learned loads today Michelle I know I have so that's yeah. fantastic and it's a great way to get out there in the countryside and um, and enjoy it um, I'm going to put some links below so anywhere that we can get in co contact with you, DogFit and your, also your online training, which will be fantastic um, uh, for people to use. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I've really enjoyed I that. I hope Thank you've you. enjoyed this week's Thank show. You. Let me know if you, via Twitter if you ever tried Canny Cross or are you thinking of giving it a go. Just tag me in Studio 44 Pilates and use the hashtag Pilates for Runners. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on next week's show. See you next time.